Um, so I've come up with a different definition of the G word. I'm here to talk about Africa and donkeys. And in 1996, I went to the GSM World Congress in Cannes, right, which took place in the basement of the Hilton Hotel. There was about 100 participants, and there were 50 million mobile phone subscribers. We've heard about mobile phones today. Um, this year, there were 73,000 participants, and there are 6.8 subscribers, mobile phone subscribers in the world. That's almost the same number of people in the world, which is 7.1. That was unimaginable 17 years ago. Now, we think something unimaginable is going to happen in Africa. In the skies of Africa, and I like the fact that there's this kite here, which is held by heaven. heaven. Now, there are many things we don't know about Africa. The first one is size. And you can see on the slide here, the United States fits in nicely in the north part of America. You've got India fits in the horn of Africa. Uh, and you've got Switzerland, where I come from, which is like that blue dot right at the top. I think I've it here. Um, but there are three things we do know about Africa, and we've heard some of them. The first one is that the population is going to double by 2050, and 50% of Africans are going to be under the age of 18. The second point is that the economy is going to quadruple by the time most of us retire, and the fastest growing economies are not in Asia. And the third thing we know about Africa is that 2020, 80% of young Africans will own a 200 less smartphone made in China and will be buying things online. And what will they be buying? Everything, anything. Now they'll be buying electronic goods, they'll be buying healthcare, clothing, fashion accessories, and a lot of accessories for the babies. Now the problem is going to be with delivery. Connectivity is being sold, right? They have 40% annual growth with mobile broadband in Africa. And mobile payment is already a success in Africa and take away the risk of cash on delivery. Now, this is a real problem. It's not so much that growth can't be used during the wet season. The problem is that according to the African Development Bank, they should be investing $95 billion every year in infrastructure. But they're investing half of that. So it's not a question of money, it's a question of time. They just can't cope with the growth rate, the economic growth rate and demographic growth rate. So, as we know, air transportation can be the most efficient way to transport goods. And those who want to be convinced, I recommend reading The Simple Science of Flight, a really, really good book, again, I'm not here, which I didn't hear about. And if it's unmanned, we will have advantages. We can make it smaller, we can make it safer, we can make it more dependable, and maybe a manned solution. So we took this idea to Africa, right? We presented it. And this is my partner, who was a correspondent for The Economist for 10 years. And we explained the idea of what we wanted to do. And this was the initial reaction. You want to put my donkey in the sky, right? <coughs> now, we want to transport massively. We don't want to transport just two kilos. We need to transport 20 kilos. Now, we took this fine donkey pitch further. And this was the initial reaction, you know, kind of. But very quickly, the questions were flying, no pun intended. You know, the guy was saying, it wasn't about receiving goods, it was about, could I ship my goat meat? Could I ship my honey, my fresh vegetables, even my gemstones to the market to get the best price? Those were the questions we were getting back. Now, this is something quite amazing in Africa. It's the Nokia 1100, it's called the Kalashnikov of Telecommunication. The fact that Nokia managed to put such complex technology in a simple device and make it affordable has completely changed Africa. Right? We believe the same thing should be done with uh, air transportation. And it's about uh, connecting communities in a shared economy. And this has to be done at a massive scale. It's not two kilos, it's 20 kilos. It's thousands of flying donkeys. And this is what I found at the Ministry of Transportation. They want world-class transportation systems. So, we're proposing to organize a challenge. And this challenge, basically, is to fly around Mount Kenya in 24 hours, picking up and dropping off 20 kilo payloads. And this is Mount Kenya on the left, 
as you see, this is the second highest mountain in Africa, more interesting to climb than Kilimanjaro, and there's a whole bunch of communities around there about the infrastructure I was describing. The way we propose to do that is organizing four tracks to address the problems and do it incrementally. Right? We don't think that somebody could actually win the challenge by 2018, but we will do it incrementally, working on all the aspects, which are obviously technology, that's legal, that's why I'm here, but we also believe that the logistics is key, integrating the existing delivery services and the design. And we are proposing to organize the first event in northern Kenya, where there is a lot of space. And this picture shows right in the center, that's a tip of Mount Kenya you saw before. This is a big, big area where you know, airspace is available and that we can use existing facilities. We are raising significant money to fund teams to uh, celebrate mission, uh, my uh, achievements and obviously to reward the winners. In our team we have Eva, also known as Jetman, and as Steve Jobs said, you know, those who are crazy enough to think they can change the world usually do. Thank you.